So I just went to Colorado recently and took a bunch of landscape photos and I got home and I dumped all of them into a folder in Luminar Neo and started editing. And of course I've been using Luminar Neo for a long time and all the previous versions of Luminar before that. So I've got a lot of experience with it and I just kind of know what I want to do. I look at a photo and I kind of know what I want to do to it. And of course I pretty much know how to do what I want to do to it as well. So I was just going in and editing and plugging away and I was loving the results. And then I kind of had a thought. I was like, you know, everybody hasn't spent a lot of time in Luminar Neo. And uh, if I was a beginner to Luminar Neo, I might look at all the different tools because if you look here, there are massive amounts of tools between Essentials, Creative, Portrait, and Pro, not to mention extensions. You got layer properties. You got lots of different things to think about. And so I just kind of thought, you know, if I was new to Luminar Neo, I might get a little bit overwhelmed. I might do things that actually weren't that great for my image, but they were kind of easy, like hit a couple of AI sliders. Nothing wrong with them. They're great. I use them. But I just kind of thought, I think I'll make a video for those of you that are new to Luminar Neo and show you the two things that I think that you need to learn how to do that really aren't that hard, but can have a dramatic and massive impact on your photo. So I'm going to do that in this video, show you exactly how I start editing a photo, and of course, share all the tips and tricks that I can along the way. Now, before I go any further, the nice folks over at Skylum Software that make Luminar Neo have offered a 30% discount to any new user. So that would be using discount code GEM30 at checkout. I'll put a link down below. That's good for four days. That's going to run until the end of the day U.S. Central Time Thursday this week, which is October 19. So use that code GEM30, save 30%, get an incredibly powerful photo editor, and then come back here and watch more videos, and I'll help you get started in making beautiful photos. Now, if you happen to catch this after that deal has expired, don't worry. You can still take advantage of my regular coupon code, which I'll put down below and which saves you up to 15%. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There's really two things that you really, I think, have to master. The first one is develop and develop raw. Now, it's a raw file. Therefore, it's called develop raw. You cannot do any masking when it's a develop when it's in develop raw. In other words, you can't mask on a raw file, but you can use develop multiple times and you can mask it on those subsequent times. And so what I'm going to do is come in with develop raw and make some minor adjustments. Now, a thing that I recommend is keep your histogram uh, active. If you don't see your histogram, click on view and show histogram. I think you want to have that. It shows you the distribution of light. And while you're at it, I like to hit the J key when I'm in develop raw, and then I'll turn it on and off multiple times during my edit. And that shows me areas that are either blown out, which is uh, covered in red here, or completely dark, which is covered in blue, which I don't see. So that tells me already I've got a little bit of a problem with some uh, highlights, but that's an easy fix here in develop raw. Now, one of the things I like to do is I'm actually going to bump this exposure a little bit to the right simply because it needs to be a little bit brighter. Those highlights do need to come down. I'm going to take them down 100. And I ended up experimenting here, going to contrast uh, of about high 27, 28, something about like that. But I lifted the shadows as well. That contrast will, of course, uh, darken the dark parts and hence I'm lifting the shadows and you can see I'm kind of balancing out the exposure a little bit here. I'm going to leave the blacks alone and pull the whites down about a negative 17 or 18 and temperature and tint. I'm going to just click there to type and 5256 is the number I ended up with which is a slight bump in warmth and then I'm going to take the tint to about a 23 uh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to give Vibrance a bump of about a 5. Now, if you take a look at the photo before and after, let me show you that. Before and after, let me turn off that J key. That's why I turn it on and off a lot during my edits, simply because uh, sometimes that overlay, which is useful as a guide, sometimes it's not so useful when you're trying to just look at the photo because it's in your way. So it's out of my way now. But you can see I've got nice light. I've got nice shadow, and the play of light and shadow, I think, makes this photograph, not to mention the color, and the colors are the blue in the sky, and then the warmth of the light kind of hitting the um, side of the mountains, as well as the warmth in these trees. We're going to play every bit of that up in this edit, and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So, there it is before, and there it is now. 
Okay, so the tool that you have to learn first is develop or develop raw. Again, it's develop raw on a raw file after the first use. Uh, after you finish using it, close it and open it again. And then it's just called develop. And that's what we're going to do here, my friends, because we're going to use the two things that I'm going to talk about in this video, which is develop and masking. Learn those two. Uh, learn how to operate the different kinds of masks as well as all the different sections here within develop and trust me your uh, your edits will uh, leap to new heights i am not exaggerating now like i said i want to accentuate this light here so this is where the masking comes in comes in i'm going to get masking i'm gonna get a brush and i'm going to reduce the strength to like 55 or 56 and i'm just going to paint over some of this area and i'm doing this kind of quick because you know, I'm uh, recording a video and I don't want to drag it out for you for too long, but I've basically painted over that area a little bit. And what I want to do is accentuate that light. Well, I can do that in a couple of ways. The first way is lifting the exposure and making it a little bit brighter. So in other words, you can see it even a little bit better than you could before. And I think, you know, maybe about like that, like a 36. Uh, now I'm going to go down to this temperature and tint and saturation and vibrance area. Temperature, I'm actually going to lift that about three or four. So in other words, I've painted with my uh, brush just into that little area and I've made it a little bit brighter. I'm now making it a little bit warmer and I'm going to give it a little bit of a tint. So like a 15 or 16 and I'm going to give it a tiny bit of vibrance. All I'm trying to do is make that stand out a little bit more. If you're out shooting and the light is catching the side of something, your eye is drawn to it already. So I didn't really have to worry about that. But if you look at the before and the after, it's a little bit more popping, uh, popish. I don't know what the word is, but um, I have done that and that's develop and a brush mask. Now that I've closed it, I'm going to open develop again. And this time I'm going to get the mask and I'm going to go into brush. And again, I'm dropping the strength. 60 seems uh, pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is kind of focus in on some of these trees that are uh, nice and beautiful with that color. So I'm just going to hit a little bit of these areas. And yes, there is a um, utility pole or uh, like electric lines or utility lines kind of running through there, which I would need to take out. I'm not going to do that in this video, but if you happen to see those, you have good eyes. Uh, and also, um, I see them and I will remove them in the final edit, just probably not in this video. So all I'm doing is highlighting and I've got a lower strength brush and I'm just coming in here and just kind of painting some of these areas that I want to add a little bit of emphasis to. And that's all I'm doing. So something about like that. And let me get this little guy here, you know, something like that. And now I'm going to go back to adjustments. And what I want to do is lift that exposure. So I want to brighten the uh, the warm and increase the warmth basically on these little, uh, these happy little trees, right? So I'm going to take the temperature up and I'm going to go to about a six or seven. So something about like that. And I'm going to go tint up maybe about a five. And I'm going to go vibrance up maybe like a six or seven or eight, something about like that. So if you take a look at the before and the after, those beautiful fall trees that are different color than the green ones are really just standing out and I think they look fantastic. So before and after. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna click the top of develop again and close it and open it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm just using the same tool in this entire video. I hope it doesn't bore you, but I want to illustrate how important it is to really get your arms around using this tool in combination with different masks in order to make sure that you get a fantastic photo at the end. So speaking of mask, mask, brush, and again, strength, you know, I'm using 50 to 60 here. Uh, every photo is going to be different. So just kind of do whatever you need to do each time. But this time I'm going to paint these darker trees. And if you're figuring out what I'm doing already, then, you know, good on you. That's, uh, that's because you're paying attention and I love it. And what I'm doing is highlighting these darker green trees because I'm creating a little bit of contrast. Um, you've probably heard the term dodge and burn. I'm dodging and burning. Uh, that's essentially what I'm doing. And I'm doing this a little bit uh, haphazardly in terms of my masking. Uh, my, my plan is strategic, not haphazard. Uh, my execution during a live video is sometimes uh, not, the, uh, not the best. Uh, but 
you know, we're all friends here, and I think you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do something about like that. So I can just hold this down, and you will see where I painted. Again, I painted at a lower opacity brush. I might come in here and hit a couple little bits of that. And what I want to do now is come in, and I'm actually going to drop the exposure here. And I'm going to go like a negative 60 or 70, you know, something about like that. You don't have to uh, do a ton. Maybe 80 is a little too much. Maybe 73. That looks fine. Um, the numbers in material, the point is I'm focused on shaping the light. And the best tool for shaping the light is develop in combination with a mask. That's why I'm lather, rinse, repeat in this video. Lather, rinse, repeat. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to add a little bit of smart contrast too. It gives a nice little extra bit of pop. So let me show you the before and the after. I'm just shaping that shadow. A moment ago I shaped the light, now I'm shaping the shadow. So again, it's dodging and burning. Dodging is lightning, burning is darkening, but that's what I'm doing before and after. So I'm creating contrast because what that does is allow those warm golden trees that I already lit up a little bit and added a little extra color umph to, it allows them to stand out better because the stuff around them is dark. So it's a nice interplay of dark versus bright and colorful. And that's really what I'm going for here. So before and after, I think that looks quite good. And now what I want to do is actually do a little bit of something with the sky. And I'm going to use develop and I'm going to use a mask, but no, I'm not going to use mask AI. Nothing wrong with it. It's a great tool. I typically will use a linear gradient mask to hit the sky. And the reason why is because of uh, the second word in the name of the tool, and that, that word is gradient. And what I mean by that is you have this zone here. You get 100% of your adjustment up there, and then it starts to fade from that top line all the way down to this bottom line, and which means it's a gradient or a gradual fade, which means any edit that you do, 100% up above that the, this line, and then it starts to fade to zero, which means it blends in really nicely into the rest of your photo. So I've got a uh, fade, uh, what I call a gradient zone, which is between that upper and lower line. I've got a nice kind of extended gradient zone, which I think is important. Uh, and I've got that about where I want it to be. So I'm gonna click on the adjustments tab. And what I'm gonna do is slightly brighten that sky I mean, just very slight, just a tiny bit. And temperature, I'm gonna go slightly warmer, like a two. Uh, tint, I'm gonna go kinda high, like a 23, 24. It, um, it, you have to be careful with tint, and I love that magenta. Uh, if you've been here before, you may know that. Um, when, when it's kind of a golden hour, it actually works quite well on a photo like that. I think it's, it's working well here. It's not gonna overly look uh, magenta. Uh, but it, uh, in combination with that warmth, I think it looks pretty nice. Now, I could go warmer if I wanted to, but I kind of liked it at two or three. I'm going to leave it at, uh, well, I'm on three. How about we leave it at three? Uh, and then my vibrance is going to go to about 10. You may notice I don't use saturation very much. And in fact, I almost never use saturation here in the color uh, section of Develop. To be fair, there are some amazing color tools in Luminar. And if it's new to you, I've got plenty of videos about it, and I'll continue to cover that in future videos. Uh, in this video, I'm just focused on develop and masking because these are the two things that I think you, if you learn these, everything else will just start to fall into place. These are the first, uh, the first bits of the foundation of the uh, editing skills that you're building, right? So if you look at the sky before and after, now it's a little bit warmer and the tones match a little bit better with the rest of the scene. Now I'm going to close that, and yes, I'm going to go one more time in develop. Now this time, I'm not going to mask. This is something I like to do. I will start with develop raw, no masking, uh, and then I'll use develop multiple times with masks, and a lot of times I'll come back at the end of my edit with develop one more time, but with no mask, and just apply whatever I do to this uh, instance of develop across the entire photo. In this case, I'm going to slightly brighten it a little bit and give it a slight bit of contrast as well. And again, these are... Uh, completely uh, hitting the entire photo. Uh, in other words, they're global, what I like to call global edits versus local edits. I'm gonna hit that J key again. You can see I'm getting a little bit uh, highlight blown out right there. So it's good to turn that on now and then just to kind of check on stuff. And I'm gonna pull this down and, and they're totally gone at negative 18. So I think that looks great. I'm gonna hit J again just to, I don't need it anymore. Uh, temperature and tint, I'm gonna do a little bit more tint 
And uh, like I said, with Golden Hour, I feel like you can kind of move that tint a little bit to the right and it doesn't become overly magenta like there. It doesn't, I just think it complements that kind of gold warm tone. And then a little bit of vibrance, like maybe a four. And let me show you that before and after. And that's the entire edit, my friend. So before and after, okay? Before and after. We did develop raw to set your base canvas. We did develop again and again and again and again, multiple times to do different things. Sky, the gold light on the mountains, the gold on the trees, and then also to darken the green trees to create that contrast and that color pop uh, so that the photo really stands out and so that fall foliage really comes to life. And then we use develop again at the very end just to do a global adjustment across the entire photo. But the bottom line is you can take a photo that's, you know, it's got good bones as they say, like in real estate or you know, uh, construction. It's got good bones, I think. It's a nice looking photo, a little too dark, needs some work. You know, the, the, the beautiful stuff in the foreground is not popping because it's kind of in shadow. And now um, it's, it's still in shadow. It's not nearly as bright as other stuff. And there's not direct light hitting it, but it's brighter and it's warmer and it really pops off the screen because of that dodging and burning and all the work that we did. So that's why I think these are the two things, using develop and using just some basic masking tools, these are the two things that if I was new to Luminar, I would focus my efforts on first. And I would focus a lot of time and effort on them because they're incredibly powerful. And so if you haven't got Luminar yet and you're thinking about it, check out the link down below and use that code GEM30 to save 30% on any package that you get on their website. In other words, it can be the lifetime license with all the extensions, or it could be one of their subscriptions, but you get 30% off. It's a smoking deal on an incredible product that I think you can use to do incredible things to your photos without really having to get too detailed or too technical. It's powerful. It's easy to use. I love it. That's how I would go about editing this photo. As I said, there are plenty of other tools in Luminar Neo, and I love them, and I use a lot of them. But sometimes it's just the simple stuff is all you need to really make a photo stand out. That's how this one went, my friends, one more time before and after. Thanks for watching. I hope it gives you some ideas. I'll be back soon with more videos about Luminar Neo. You guys take care and until next time, adios.